In this theorem we want to prove that in a parallelogram opposite sides are equal and opposite angles are equal. Again, before we start the theorem, let's revise. First of all, I need to know my alternate angles. Again, if we have parallel lines, and remember we're going to talk about a parallelogram, and opposite sides in a parallelogram are going to be parallel. So, with parallel lines, enclosed between the parallel lines, we have alternate angles. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 4, and they're alternate angles. Now let's look at congruent triangles. Congruent triangles are identical triangles. The type of congruency that we're going to look here at here are where we've got two angles the same and the included side the same. So I've put the same marking here and I've drawn the triangles here in the same way. Sometimes, as we know, they can be flipped around. These two angles are the same measure, so I've put the same little symbol O on them. And these two angles are the same measure, so I've shown that by putting a little X on both. And the included side is the same. So that means that everything else about the triangles are the same. So corresponding sides and angles are the same. So my remaining angles would be the same measure. This side is corresponding to this side because it's opposite the X. They're the same measure. And opposite the angle O, those sides are corresponding. They're the same measure. So with just these three pieces of information, I can say that all six properties of the triangle are the same. Plus, don't forget the area is the same as well. So these are congruent triangles, but it's a particular case. It's where we've got the two angles the same and importantly, the included side. And the symbol for congruency is alike and equal to with an extra line. So these two triangles are congruent. Now we're going to prove the theorem that in a parallelogram opposite sides are equal and opposite angles are equal. So the first thing that I need to state is what I'm given. Well, I need a parallelogram. Again, note I'm not constructing a parallelogram, I'm drawing it freehand. Note again, with the parallelogram, we start at any point to label it and we go clockwise or anti-clockwise around the figure. So that parallelogram could also be called ADCB. But just be careful to go clockwise or anti-clockwise when you're labelling the parallelogram. Now we want to prove that opposite sides are equal. So AB and DC are opposite sides. And again, we're using these straight lines to say the length of AB is equal to the length of DC. And the other pair of opposite sides. We also want to show that the opposite angles are equal in measure. Note that the opposite angles both start and stop with the same letters. D and B. So that's just a little check that you know that you're writing them correctly. And the other pair of opposite angles are going to start with A and C. Now prove it. Well, we need a construction for this. We need a construction for this because we haven't enough information here to prove that the opposite sides and the opposite angles are equal. So I'm going to draw a diagonal. It doesn't matter which diagonal you draw, but I'm drawing the diagonal because we know with a parallelogram we've got opposite sides parallel. That's what makes it a parallelogram. And if I draw a diagonal, I'll have some alternate angles. Now write down what I've drawn. 
So I've chosen the diagonal BD. If you choose AC, you'll still prove it correctly. And it's a line segment, so I've got my square brackets. And now I'm going to number my angles so that I don't have to do formal labelling all the time. Now the proof. Now remember again, my last lines of the proof have to be exactly the same as what I wanted to proof. So now I'm going to look at the two triangles that are formed. And I am aiming to show that the two triangles are congruent. So the first thing that I can see is that I've got some alternate angles. So if I look at the two parallel lines AB and DC, I can see that 3 and 4 are a pair of alternate angles. So let's take the two triangles. So I've got two triangles here in triangles ABD and triangle BCD. Now I'm going to write down everything to do with ABD down here and everything to do with BCD down here just to make it clear. So angle 3 belongs to this triangle and that's equal to angle 4 because they're alternate. Now if we look at the other pair of parallel lines AD and BC, this is the line cutting them, I can see that 1 and 2 are also alternate angles. Now angle 1 belongs to this triangle so I'm going to write it down here. And that's because they are alternate as well. Both triangles have the side DB in them. So the length of DB is the same as the length of DB and it's a common side. So now I can see that I've got two angles and the included side in both triangles. So they're both congruent. And I'm using my symbol for congruency. And I'm stating Y. Angle, side, angle. So AD and BC are equal because they're corresponding. And also AB and DC are equal because they're corresponding sides. Now I've got corresponding angles as well. The angle at A and the angle at C are corresponding angles. And then if I look at ADC, it's made up of 1 and 4. And ABC is made up of 2 and 3. And they, the sum of those, are equal. So I can say the angle ADC is equal to the angle ABC. And I'll just put a little reason there behind that. So that's because this one is made up of angle 1 and 4 and this one is made up of 2 and 3 and they're both equal. Now I can see that I have proved my theorem 